Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain GridView widget in Flutter. Basically, GridView has got several constructors. In this session, I will focus only on the default constructor called GridView and remaining constructors I will cover in upcoming sessions. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's quickly understand what a grid view is. A grid view widget in Flutter is a scrollable two-dimensional array of widget. Commonly used to display collection of items like images or cards in a grid layout. Now let's see the practical for grid view. Children property takes the list of widget which needs to be shown in the form of grid. For showing the container in grid, I have defined a function called mybox that simply returns a blue color container with given index. Let's use these myboxes as the children for grid view. Now let me talk about very important property called grid delegate. It is a required property of grid view that defines the layout of your grid. It takes sliver grid delegate instance. Sliver grid delegate is an abstract class which has two concrete subclasses. First one is sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count and another one is sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent. Let's understand sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. It creates a grid layout with fixed number of tiles in cross axis. For deciding the number of tiles, we need to use the property called cross axis of this sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. For example, when I use say value for this cross axis is 2, you can observe here it will create a grid of 2 tiles in the cross axis. Now, if I change this 2 to say 3, you can observe here there are 3 tiles in the cross axis. And when I change it to 4, you can observe the change in my UI. Let me make you clear about what do you mean by main axis and cross axis in case of the grid view. When you scroll vertically in a grid view, then that vertical axis represents the main axis, or, and the another axis that is horizontal axis will act as the cross axis here. While in case of the grid view where you can scroll in the horizontal direction, then that direction acts as the main axis, and the another axis that is another direction will act as the cross axis. Let's change the value of this cross axis count to say 3. And let me comment the margin so that we don't have any margins here. Let's save here. You can observe now. Uh, there is no spacing among these tiles here. Now, GridView has an option to apply spacing here. For apply spacing uh, in the main axis. So, as this specific grid view has the direction of scroll in a vertical direction. So, here main axis represents the vertical direction. So, let me use your 60. You can observe here. So, each tile will have the margin of 16 pixel. I hope you understood what do you mean by the 16 pixel in the main axis. And let me apply here, say, cross axis spacing so that we can have spacing of, uh, say, 4 pixel in a cross axis. So let's save here. You can observe here. There is a spacing of uh, 4 pixels. Let me apply equal spacing. Let's write here, say, 8 in a main axis, and the same is for cross axis. You can observe that each tile has exactly the same width and height. If you want to change the height, use the property called child aspect ratio. It is the ratio of cross axis to main axis extent. The value for this must be between 0 0.0 to 1.0. For example, when you use say 1.0, it indicates it will have same width and same height. And if I change say this value to say 0 0.5, it means the height of tile is double than its width. Many times we want specific pixel height for the tile instead of having uh, the height in the form of ratios. So in that case, we need to use a property. First of all, uh, let me comment this child aspect ratio. There's a property called main axis extent. So for example, if I use say 100 here, it means each tile will have exactly 100 pixel height here. Why I'm saying height? Because my list view has a scroll direction of vertical. If it is horizontal, it will work as the width. So if I change it to say 50, you can observe here, each tile will have 50 pixel height. And if I change it to say 200, so each tile will acquire 200 uh, pixel height here. So I hope it's clear for you how we can control the height using this child aspect ratio and the main axis extent. Let's see the sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent. It is used when number of grids have to be decided by extent that is by the size of the grid. Here size of each grid is decided by the property called max cross axis extent. Let's use value 100 here and let's save. The value 100 here indicates each tile will have a width of 100 pixel. Why I'm saying width here? This is because my grid view has scroll direction of vertical. So for me, the cross axis is horizontal. That's why I'm saying width here. So let's change it to say 200. Now you can observe the difference here. And if I change it to say 300, you can observe here, each tile will try to have the width of 300 pixels here. 
Very important thing that everyone has to observe in case of this max cross axis extent is that number of tile is not just decided by using the uh, size that you are giving. Means, okay, if I'm giving here, say, 300 pixels here, you can observe here there are only two tiles available. Okay, it is basically depend also on another factor that is how much space is available in your cross axis. Right now, in my cross axis, there's this much space available. If I rotate my uh, phone, you can observe here the uh, space available in my cross axis now it has increased so that's why you can observe here in my tile means in my cross axis there are total three tiles and if i go back to my original position there are only two tiles in the cross axis we already seen the properties called child aspect ratio cross axis spacing main axis spacing and the main axis extend in case of the sliver grid dealing it with fixed cross axis count we can apply padding for entire grid using property called padding. So let's use here agent sets. Let's use it all and let's say uh, 24 pixels padding. So we can observe here uh, my entire grid has got the padding of 24 pixels across all the sides. Reverse allows us to reverse the sequence of tiles in a grid. Let's change its value to true and you can observe here the sequence of tiles uh, due to this reverse has changed. Which is property enables us to apply the scroll effect after reaching at the end of the grid. For example, the default value for this physics is the clamping scroll physics. So let's use the clamping scroll physics. So you can observe here uh, when we reach at the end, we are getting some clamping like effect here. And instead of this clamping, let me change you to say bouncing scroll physics. We can write here bouncing scroll physics. Let's save. And now you can observe here uh, when I just uh, I reach at the end and when I try to just again scroll, I'm getting the bouncing like effect here. Cache extent is an important property which has significant impact on the performance of your grid view and of course on your flat application. Viewport has the area after and before the visible area in order to catch the items that are about to become visible when user scrolls. For example, if we use the value of cache extent say 2000, it means your grid view will keep the items ready in its cache in order to hold the tiles that can fit in the thousand pixels uh, for this uh, top portion means for this top portion and for the bottom portion as well using a controller we can control the scrolling of grid view programmatically and respond to various scrolling events that's it for this video see you guys in the next video if you really found this video helpful and knowledgeable then don't forget to like share subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos